Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video I will show you my workflow for creating hyperlapses with a DJI Spark. It will be a pretty technical and long video, so please bear with me. As a Spark owner, you know that this little drone doesn't have a built-in hyperlapse mode. So I'll show you how I create hyperlapses with the DJI Spark drone. I will cover some settings I am using as well as the post-production tasks. But first, let's clarify a couple of things. This method for creating hyperlapses involves taking still pictures, then adding them to the timeline to produce a video. That means for each frame of the video, you need to take one still picture. If you are using a 24 frames per second timeline, then you need 24 pictures for one second video. For a three second hyperlapse, you need to take 72 stills. For a 5 seconds video, you need 120 stills, and so on. Considering the smallest time frame between the shots is 2 seconds, then for a 5 seconds video, the shooting time will be 4 minutes. Now let's cover some of the settings I recommend. First up, turn on the grid in the Go For app. That will help you framing the shot and keep a steady movement. In this example, I'm trying to keep the road aligned with the lower line of the grid. Shoot in manual mode to avoid exposure changes. Use the tripod mode and that will make the movements of the drone smoother. Since you will try to keep a constant speed of the drone for a pretty long time, I would recommend having your arms or elbows resting on something, a bench, a table or your knees. Then start shooting using the timed shot. You can easily count how many pictures you've taken by keeping an eye on the info in the upper right corner or trying to estimate the time since you started the timed shot. I noticed that flying with speeds above 1.4 km per hour may result in less shakiness. Now, if you have your pictures, let's move to the post-production workflow. I am using Premiere Pro, but the workflow would be similar if you are using other video editing tools. First step is to make sure that when adding the pictures to the timeline, each one of them will be counted as one frame. So to check that, go to Edit, Preferences, Timeline, and then select Still Image Default Duration 1 Frame. Import the pictures into the project, select them all and drag them onto the timeline. When playing the sequence, there may be some or more shakiness caused by the wind, the motors or by the movement of the remote controller sticks. Let's try and stabilize the footage using Warp Stabilizer. Before that, select all the pictures on the timeline by dragging a box around them and then right-click and choose Nest. Go to Effects and search for Warp and drag the effect onto the nested sequence. In the Effects control panel, you will notice that the Warp Stabilizer is added and it already started to analyze the footage. The default smoothness is set to 50%, but I learned that it is working better if the value is between 10 and 15%. You can play with that number to see what is working best for you. 
Once Stabilizer finished its job, you can play back the clip and see how it looks like. Adjust the smoothness if you think 1015 was not enough. And you can also add the Lumetri effect and adjust the colors. Although, since we are working with JPEGs, may not yield great results. Add some sound design and you're done. And that was all. Let me know in the comments below how is it working for you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you find this useful. Have a nice day.